Welcome back. Got your paints ready? Easel set up and all ready to do a fantastic painting with me? Good. Tell you what, let's have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to do this painting with me. And while they're doing that, let's go on up here and let me tell you what I've already done. I've covered this canvas, which is an 18 by 24 as usual. I've covered it with a piece of contact paper that has an oval cut in it. Now this is just normal old contact paper you can pick up at your local hardware store, grocery store, whatever. I've just cut an oval out of it, stuck it on there, and then I've covered this whole inside with liquid white as we normally do. Other than that, there's nothing different about that. I thought today we'd do a fantastic little winter scene that I really think you're going to enjoy. So I tell you what, let's go on up here and get started and we'll take right off. I'm going to start out today with a small amount of Prussian blue. Just a little bit. And a little touch of midnight black. So we have Prussian blue and midnight black. Okay, and just mix them right on the brush, like so. Okay, let's go right up here. Now, using the little crisscross or X strokes, let's just make a happy little sky. Now, see how you're making these little X's? Just like so. Start at the top and work downward. By starting at the top and working downward, your paint will mix with the liquid white and automatically your sky will get lighter toward the horizon. And this is one of those little tricks that helps create the illusion of depth and distance in your painting. Still using the little crisscross strokes. Just like so. This is just Prussian blue and midnight black. Okay. Now then, while I have that color still on the brush, maybe we'll have a little water in this. I love water, so I use the same colors, just blue and black, or black and blue. <laughs> whatever you prefer. Okay, let's go right in here and I'll just go right across like so. I don't know exactly where the water is going to be, so anything that's not water will make it snow. We'll make a little winter scene and all of this can be shadows. So it really doesn't matter where you put this, just, just have fun. Okay, now then, let's wash our brush. And we wash our brush with good old odorless thinner. And be sure it's odorless. If it's not, son of a gun, you're going to get run right out of the house. You'll, you'll be working out in the yard. Shake off the excess. Then <laughs> just take out all your hostilities. This is really where you have fun. Now then, with a good clean dry brush, I'm going to start in the light area and blend upward. Still using the little crisscross strokes, little X strokes. Just blend upward. Like so. Like so. Okay, now, very lightly, we just go across and take out all those brush strokes so that it's pretty smooth. And if there's any areas that are real dark, just blend them and they'll blend right in. The liquid white underneath is fantastic and will take out all those dark areas. Now, I like to put a little black in this guy since it's winter. I want, I want to uh, give the impression that it's cold. We'll just go across this just to smooth it out. Okay, and that quick we have a happy little sky. Now today let's make some clouds up here. And for that, we'll use a one-inch brush. Now you can make these clouds with a one-inch brush, uh, two-inch brush, fan brush. Shoot, you can make them with your shoe. It's no big deal. Just take and pull this brush through the paint. Get a lot of paint on the brush. Okay, let's go right up here. Now you have to make a big decision. Where does your cloud live? I think I think, yep, he lives right here. And making tiny little circles, tiny little circles, continually, just like so. See, just happy little circles. Clouds, boy, they just float around and have a good time. And let your brush do that. There he is, maybe. Okay, let's have another one down here. Wherever you think a cloud lives, that's exactly where that son of a gun lives. Just drop it in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take a clean, dry, two-inch brush and use just the top of the brush and very gently blend the bottom of the cloud out. Just blend the bottom of it out. We're not touching the top at all yet. Now then, we grab it and fluff it. Just fluff it up. 
and do this in circular strokes. Avoid doing it straight up where it looks like it's raining upward. <laughs> That'll bother you. That'll really bother you. Same thing down here. Just blend it out. Fluff it. Fluff it, fluff it. And go across. Now sometimes when you're painting clouds, it's fun to do layers of clouds, one on top of the other. So completely finish one and then come back and watch here. See, we can go right in here and drop in another happy little cloud. And maybe he lives right underneath here. It doesn't matter. Wherever. You can put as many or as few clouds in your world as you want. Take our brush, <laughs> give it a good little wrap, and do the same thing. Just blend it out a little bit. See there? And then pull it. Now this is two hairs and some air. In other words, it's extremely gentle. The paint that we use is very firm. So you can do all this blending without becoming a mud mixer. If you use a, a very soft, slimy paint, you're in trouble. The only time we use soft paints is for highlights, and normally that's yellow. Yellow is normally always a highlight color, so that can be very soft. But these base colors, you need to be strong, very, very strong. Tell you what, let's do. Let's put some little trees back here in the background. I'll mix up uh, some black, some blue. Well, I like that black and blue. And a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. Okay, let me clean off my knife. And we'll take the round brush and we're going to tap. Just tap that right in there, like so. Just like this. Now then, I want some background trees back in here. So all we're looking for right now is basic shapes. Start at the bottom of the tree and work upward. So the bottom is darker than the top and put in some very basic shapes. And I think I'll put a whole line across here. We'll just have trees all the way across. You know, in, in the last series, I showed a little bird, a little, a little robin that I was raising that, that had lived with me since he was just a baby. And we've had so many people write and tell us that they, they've watched this and they want to know what happened to him. So let me show you the robin. This little bird was orphaned and he lives with me now. And I feed him every day and take care of him. And pretty soon he's gonna be a big bird. He's gonna to learn to fly. And we're gonna turn him loose and send him back to nature. Now just recently, myself and Diane Schaefer, she's the bird lady here in Muncie. We released that Robin when he was full grown. I had raised him from a little tiny baby until he was a big bird. And Diane and I let him go close to her house and that's really, it, there he went. That really makes it all worthwhile. My gosh, I must have, I must have spent half my life for a while there running around and chasing earthworms to, to feed this little robin. But I just wanted you to see that he was all right. Uh, he grew up and I was so proud to let him go. This year I raised seven little birds and they all went. We had everything from robins to starlings. Even I even raised some starlings and I know they may not be the best bird in the world but I like them. I like all little birds. There we go. And the lady you saw there on the screen that was with me, so I say she's the bird lady here in Muncie, and we're trying to put together a show to, that will show what she does and how she takes care of all these birds, and maybe you'll get to see that in the future. Okay, I've put little trees all back here in the background. Now I just want to create a little mist at the base. So I'm just going to tap, give it a little rub, tap go like so. Then give it a little upward lift. See there? It makes it nice and misty and soft. Now then, let me wash that round brush. Wash it the same way. There's a screen in the bottom of this bucket that I scrub the, the brush against. Shake it off. <laughs> and it's almost as much fun as a big brush. Now then, let's have some snow on top of all these. So I'm going right into the titanium white, and I'm going to tap, tap firmly. Use the top of these bristles is where you really want to do the tapping. Go right up in here and get some paint on them, okay? All right, let's go right up in here. Now, use just the top bristles and begin laying all kinds of little snow-covered areas on these trees. 
See there, you can just put thousands and thousands of leaves just with a couple of strokes, but layer these. See, that once again creates distance. I know you get tired of hearing me say about distance, but I think it's so important that paintings have distance in them. So many paintings are, are flat and then you don't like them. And I want you to be happy with what you learn and what you do. We get letters from people all over the country saying it's working for them, that they're turning out some of the most beautiful paintings you've ever seen. And they never dreamed they could even paint. And they can, and you can. You really can do this. We show you everything that you need here to do fantastic paintings. Absolutely fantastic paintings. And we have teachers that travel all over the country, like my son Steve. Well, that little son gun, you've seen him maybe on some of the other shows. Little bitty fellow, he's over 6'4". He travels around and teaches people. He's a lot of fun. And there's about a dozen other teachers. So if you ever get a chance, go watch them. They give demonstrations all over the country and you'll enjoy them. Okay, now we have some little snow covered trees back here. We can take our knife, just go in here and scrape in the indication of some little trunks and limbs and sticks and twigs. All kinds of things. So you got to have all these trees because my robin has to have a place to hide up here. There we go. I hope you enjoyed seeing that little rascal as much as as much as I enjoyed bringing him to you. I'm I'm sort of proud of him. It's like another kid. Okay, now I'm going to take titanium white on the two inch brush. Just pull it through the paint. A lot of paint on the brush. Let's go right up here. Now then, we have to make some big decisions. Where is the snow? Well, I think it's right there. Right there. See there? That easy. That easy. You just make a decision. Decide where your snow lives and pull it in. Just drop it in. There we go. And you can put all different angles in here so that it's not just monotonous, not just one flat angle. But now if you want it flat, this is your world, so you make it any way you want it. There we go. Isn't that super? That easy. This old two inch brushes. Boy, it's a son of a gun. You can really get in there and build some snow in a second. Tell you what, let's do. Let's have some fun today. Maybe we'll put an old barn out here and Maybe one of the easiest ways that I've found to do barns and buildings of any kind is take your knife and scrape out a basic shape where you want him to live. This removes excess paint and allows you to lay it out without really being committed. Maybe we'll do a weird shaped one today. What the heck? You can do any shaped barn in your painting that you want. Okay, now I come over here, do something like that. And down here down here, whatever. But see how easy it is to lay that whole thing out and you're not committed. Now we can go in here, let's start with some white. Let's go in here, watch here. Well, let me do it this way. This is the best way so you stay in the lines. So you just sort of outline it. Just sort of outline it. That'll help you keep it nice and smooth on the edges, then pull down. See how straight that line is? Isn't that sneaky? I'll look for those easy ways to do things. Roof comes right down like that. Right on down. And over here, we need a little bit of snow. There it is. Boy, I wished I could build a barn that quick. Now, with Van Dyke Brown, I'm gonna come right in here and put a little eave or an overhang. Now I'm gonna use some Van Dyke Brown and dark sienna sort of mixed together. And we'll start off by just putting some dark in here. We need dark in order for our light to show. You have to have dark for the light to show. If you put light against light, you have nothing. Dark against dark, you have nothing. Painting is just continually dark against light, light against dark. Okay, clean off the old knife. Now then, let's put some color in there. I'll take some dark sienna, some bright red, mix it together. Let's put the least little touch of white in there. Ooh, that's nice. Don't overmix it. Leave it about like so. 
cut off a little roll of paint. See how, even there, it's all mixed and marbled. Okay, let's go right up here. Now I'm going to just take the edge of the knife and just sort of, sort of bounce across. Now if you get some down the snow like I am here, don't worry, you just take it right off. We just zip that off. Don't worry about it. See, a little bit right in there. Now we take our knife and do a cabinectomy. That easy. And see, it gives the impression of a lot of little boards. That easy. Now a darker color, and we come right in here. There we go. That's a little darker, not as if light's going to hit in there. Now, I'll show you a little trick. Let's get us some brown on the knife here, and come right down here and look. See, we have that little roll of paint on the knife. It's so important that you have that little roll of paint. Now, maybe, maybe there's a little opening under here, so just put dark right here. There, just a little bit of dark. Now over in here, see, we'll put some more boards, like that. And with our dark, we'll continue that opening. Isn't that neat? Looks like there's a place under there the chickens could go at night. And as a kid, I had all kinds of little chickens. We put a post there so it don't fall down. The only problem though, I wasn't a very good chicken farmer. They turned out to be my friends <laughs> and I wouldn't kill them. Shoot, I, we ended up with a bunch of chickens and we're hungry. But I had my buddies. Okay, I'm gonna take a little brown. This is Van Dyke Brown. A little of the bright red in it. And I got the little knife now and I've cut off that little roll of paint with a little knife. And over here, I just wanna show, let me just go in a different angle. Now there's boards going that way. And when you're doing these old buildings, I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I make it a little bit lighter, you can see it a little better. There. See? When you're doing these, you design your barn. However you want it. Barns grow all kinds of ways. However the old farmer wanted to make them. All right, now then let's put some snow around the edges here. To do that, I'm going to dip the fan brush right into liquid clear and then go into the titanium white. I dipped it into the liquid clear to make this paint a little thinner. It's much thinner than what's on the canvas. All right, now then we can come right up here, grab this, and pull it. Because it's thinner, it'll lay on there, and you can get away with doing all kinds of things. Just look at that. Look at that. Snow's lives right up in here. Now, if you were trying to put a paint on there that was the same thickness, you'd run into some problems and you would yell at me. And I want you to be happy. I want this to work for you. There we go. Now then, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's start bringing some little things. While I have that clear, maybe there's a little pond right here. I have to make some big decisions. It's going to live right in there. Right in there. I'm going to take we use a two-inch brush, a little bit of the black and blue. I want to darken underneath here a little bit so it looks like a, a happy little reflection or two. And then just go across. Just blend that in. I want it a little bit darker and that easy. There we go. Now with our liquid clear and titanium white, we can begin bringing all these little things in here. Little pond lives right out here. See, okay. There's another one. Just however many you want. This is your little pond, so you put them where you want them. A little dark underneath. Go across. Creates that illusion of a reflection. And maybe, oh, there we go. We'll just do it that way. See how easy it is to make snow. Snow can be one of the most fun things you do. Same old brush, I'm gonna add a touch of the black and blue. And maybe right in here, there's a little bush. He lives right in there, like that. And then we can pull it out. This same idea works very well for making little sand dunes too, if you're ever doing little beach scenes. 
works very nice. Okay, a little liquid white. Put it out on the palette, we'll just cut across it, and we'll just put some, some happy little water lines around here. Sort of clean all this up, bring it together. That easy. Okay, one over here. Wherever you want them. Now you could even take your fan brush and pull a little bit of white across there and make it look like it's froze. Ooh, getting cold here. You better get your coat out. Better get your coat out. Okay. Now then, I'm going to find the liner brush, a little bit of brown. Maybe, maybe right in here there's a happy little, little stick lives here. Uh, there, we bit him. Had to make those little noises or it don't work. A few little sticks and twigs here and there. Maybe there's a couple around the house. This fella probably cuts his yard about like I do. And I'm the world's worst yard keeper. Tell you what, let me get a fan brush here. And I have several of these old fan brushes going. Go right into some Van Dyke Brown. Load the brush full of paint. A lot of color. A lot of color. Okay, let's go right up. I know what I want to do. Let's take the oval off now, and I'll show you what happens. Bring the camera right up here close, and I'm going to take this piece of contact paper off. Look at here. Look at here. Isn't that fantastic? Right there, you got a beautiful painting. But you know me, I can't stop with it. I got to keep peddling with it. I get letters all the time saying, Bob, you had a beautiful painting. I thought you'd ruined it to right to the very end. Now I want a tree. I like to break the borders on these ovals. We introduced these ovals, oh, three or four series ago, and they have become one of the most popular things we've ever done. I get letters from all over the country and, and pictures of people have shown me what they have done with ovals and numerous other shapes, not just ovals, numerous other shapes. A little brown, take a little of the titanium white, just touch, give it a little pull, a little pull. And when you're doing this at home, try all kinds of shapes. Placemats are a good place to get some nice ideas for different kinds of shapes. And you'll have a lot of fun with them. Okay, now back to my liner brush and a very thin paint. Let's put paint thinner on it, it's like water. And let's go right up in here and put a, a little tree limb here or something. See? And if this paint's very thin, then it will literally flow. And just put however many limbs you want, wherever you want them. Let some of them come across the trunk, though. Don't just put them all coming straight out. It looked like somebody took a big razor blade and slashed your tree in two and half fell off on the floor. See, some of these limbs come across the tree. Now you could put all kinds of little tiny ones here. I don't have, I don't have time to put all of them in, because if I go over 30 minutes, boy, that, that director yells and screams at me. There we go. But that's how you do them right there. Okay. Let's take our one-inch brush, just plain old one-inch brush, and I want to put some greenery down here or some shrubbery down here. Go right into the blue and the black because we need the dark in order to show light. And just go right in here and just pop in all kinds of little tree and bush shapes. All we're doing right now is putting in some dark so our light will show. That's really all we're doing. This is just dark so our light will stand out and just shine. Okay, now I'll take another one inch brush, dip it into the liquid white, and pull it through titanium white, and I'm going to add the least little touch of the bright red, just to give it a little pinkish flavor. Pull it in one direction so that it generates a curve. Turn that curve toward the top, go right up here, touch, and begin forming individual little bushes, one at a time. Don't get in a hurry. Do one bush at a time. Remember, each bush has its own personality 
Each one's a, each one's a individual. They're like people. Just however many of them you want. However many. And work in layers, just like with the little trees in the background. Tell you what, maybe there's a little bit of snow laying on the ground right there. Just let that snow break that oval. See there? Isn't that pretty? And you can do it. You really can do it. A little more of the liquid white, titanium white, a little touch of the bright red, and then a little bush or two that comes down right onto the path. Just like so. And shoot. Let's get let's have some fun here. Let's go right here. And maybe there's a happy little fence stuck down here. See, just take the knife, a little brown. Drop him in. Decide how many posts are on your fence. Like that. Put a little touch of snow on the top of each one. Come across, a little paint, make some wire. And that makes a very interesting little painting. I think we just about have a, a completed painting. Hope you enjoy these ovals. Try one yourself. I know that you'll have a lot of fun. Until next time, happy painting. God bless. I look forward to seeing you again.